prison overcrowding. No one can stop this. Maybe that's the mafia. I'm above the law. Alright, so we've been asked to talk about the rules of the chow hall. Just to set the table. So in the remand year where we were at, there wasn't like a chow hall as in the prison system. Jail is where everyone's on sentence. So in the remand, there's like a day room and there's like tables bolted down. And they were originally designed for 15 men, but they had like 45 men in. So not enough seats for the tables. And then the four major gangs, the whites, the blacks, Mexicans, Mexican-Americans, they all had their own tables. But then in prison, you got like a couple hundred guys now coming from the building, getting marched over to the chow hall, 15 minutes to eat, everybody's sitting with their racial groups. And when you first go in, this is potentially a minefield because if you sit in the wrong place, you're going to get your wig split. You will definitely get your wig split. So what would you advise someone coming in, how they should behave in the chow hall? Well, there's, you, you just got sent down and, see the thing is once you hit prison, you kind of know because you don't go just straight to prison, you'll have done some county time too. You can, you can learn a lot of bad uh, habits in county as well though. I mean, because like, me and Sean had like a hundred and odd co-defendants of all mixed races and we'd sit and talk to them and we'd have a laugh and a giggle and everything but things like that you can't do when you're in if I see them you don't have to ignore them when you're in prison but you can't sit and have a laugh you can't go and give them a hug and like you know say you're all right bro and have a long talk to them there's ways around it you have a game of chess and then you can talk or something like that but it's not, um, there is rules, but as, as, as a chow hall goes, it's done by buildings. You can't obviously fit everyone in. You get 15 minutes. If you don't eat your food in 15 minutes, you're out because another building's coming that way. And you've actually, they don't do it where as you're leaving, another building's coming because that could be potential. Like, too many prisoners out at once could cause a riot. They always control you where they've got so many people out at the time. I mean, there's never enough guards anyway, but that's why they do it. Because if they have one coming in and one going out, you've got a double amount of people and then something could go off. So, you've got 15 minutes, you walk in, you're queuing up, and it's all like caged, and you see, you look over, and you see where your group of people are sat. You hopefully... If you don't know, ask. Ask someone, like, who are the heads? And they'll point to where the heads are. You don't walk straight into a new prison and just go and sit with the heads. You get invited to sit with the heads. And even if one of your mates that you, you've known in county or you're on the street with has sat with the heads, you still don't go and sit with them. Because it's quite easy for him to say, yeah, come and sit here. And, hey, this is such and such. And then you can be sat in someone's seat. They do, they do have seats. And if you're sat in fucking some torpedo seat, you've disrespected him without you even fucking knowing it. And you'll get a fucking metal tray across your fucking head real quick. Well, in, in county, it, the, the plastic trays, but the big thick trays and a corner, if you get hit with a corner of one of them, it's going to split your wig. Guaranteed, seeing it fucking done. If you just catch it just right, right on the fucking corner, right at the hardest part of your head there, shh, split wig. You turn around, you look, and you go and sit with your people, but away from. You've got your head table there, and then you've got two tables here, then two tables there are the torpedoes. What they do is they're looking after, if anything goes off, they're there to look after the heads. And then from there onwards, it's it's free seat, seats really. So always remember, your first table there is your heads, two tables around it are your torpedoes, and then the other tables what are left are for your people. Don't ever go and sit at the wrong fucking table, I've seen it done, I've seen people get set up, 
and say, oh, you can all sit fucking there with the uh, Native Americans, they don't mind, we're sound with them. And I've seen people do it, and nine times out of ten, they'll get a slap. But what happens is the person that told them, he'll get the main slap because he shouldn't have been such a fucking dick for setting them up. But you will get a slap. So you, there's a lot of rules in the chout as well. If you're serving it, and your mate's coming up, yeah, your first instinct is to want to give him more. But at the end of the day, if you do that, the person next to him will want the same portion. And then the person next to him, and, and especially if it's a fucking other race next to you. Say you give this white boy two pieces of chicken, and there's a black guy next, and he, he he's only got one. He'll say, like, what the fuck? And it'll cause a fucking issue there and then. There's, and people are very serious about the food. Especially if it's a decent meal. So not all meals are shit in there. I didn't get up for many breakfasts, but I did get up for the Mexican breakfast because it was nice and it was filling. And I'd always go when it was the chicken and rice because I like chicken. It's not only blacks that like chicken, I like chicken. And what other meal did I like? I like the enchiladas too. And But other than that, I didn't really go to the chow hall that much. I I, I, used to, I run a store, so basically I'd have food in and I've done my, I don't know if you've seen my prison videos on cooking, I cook quite a bit in there. So I, I tend, I didn't go to the chow all that much. But when I did go, I'd know, when I first got in, I'd be sat here, and then as time goes on, you go and get to sit with, with, with the heads, if you're active and if you want to. Um, other rules are, don't um, have bad table manners, like, don't start chomping and shit because what will happen there is someone will fucking say something to you and then you just feel like a fucking cunt and like fucking it can cause an issue. There's so many ways that you could cause a problem by disrespecting, even though you don't know when you're fucking doing it, it could be just a bad habit, but before you know it, you might have to fucking stand up and fight over your bad habit because someone will say something to you, then you can't. In front of other people, you can't let someone say something to you because then you got punked out. You've got to turn around and fucking act upon it. And all that, just because you fucking don't know how to eat. No, I mean, just think it a little bit. A lot of it is all about common sense, but common sense ain't very fucking common. You've got to really just watch your P's and Q's when you're in there. And, um, yeah, just... I, I don't know, just... Treat people how you want to be treated to. It, it could be a new lad. Don't take the piss out of the new lads. Look after them, you know what I mean? Because that new lad one day, it could be a right going on, and that new lad one day could be stopping you from getting a fucking shank. Always look after your new people. And always look after your young lads as well. Because a lot of the young lads are coming in, they're nervous as fuck. I mean, some of them are pretty boys, you know what I mean? Fucking looking all stylish and on the street and that and they come in and they, they're marked in different fucking ways you got your old fucking perverts you got your lifers who won't fucking I mean they're allowed to have a fucking bum boy you know what I mean <laughs> the other thing you got to be aware of in the chowl not just how you're behaving around the prisoners is with the guards as well one of the first disciplinary tickets I got you you're allowed 15 minutes to eat in the chow hall, like Wild Man said. So, what I noticed was people were grabbing, were going out the chow line because as you're coming into the chow hall, it's like a line, it's filtered, and there's these high fences. So, you're all in this one straight line coming up to pick up your chow. And, and there's like a basket of apples or some kind of fruit or something. So, some people would jump in the line, get in the fruit going back into the line where they came out of and just eating the fruit before they got the actual meal because the time it took to eat the fruit ate into your meal time and within the 15 minutes you couldn't get it all eaten and you can't take food out of the chow hall otherwise they searching you on the way out and you get a disciplinary ticket for that as well. So I jumped out of the line, I saw the people doing it, grabbed an apple I'm back in the line eating my apple and the next thing this female guard just comes 
get here Atwood, and then what did you just do, blah blah blah. And the next thing, she writes me up when I get a disciplinary ticket for leaving the chow line. So, people smuggle loads of food out during dinner times. Um, what they do is, generally, they'll hide it. The kitchen staff will hide it and give it to people. Like They'll like tape it under a table and shit like that. Yeah. And then, um, dude will hide it in his clothes or keister it or whatever. Because on the way out of the chow hall, You've also got guards who are just randomly selecting people and patting them down. We had one guard who was called a fruit Nazi, and he was just hysterical. He'd like pat this guy down, pat this guy down, try and get all his fruit off people to stop him from making hooch. It, yeah, it, you will get to, your tables there are metal tables, and if like if you paid someone for sugar or yeast or whatever, it's it, it's the best way to get it is. The kitchen guys will get it and they'll tape it under your table. Another quick way to get smashed is taking someone else's fucking style. You can be sat there and think, oh, what the fucking hell is that? If it's not yours, don't fucking take it. That's feeding and you're going to get smashed. As of the apples and stuff, the easiest way to actually get them out the chow hall is you always have a pair of pants or a couple of sizes too big for you. And generally what you do is... You, you'd have a sock, right? You put four apples or four oranges in the sock and then you, you tie it to your boxer shorts and then you fucking just have it there. And if you're going to get searched, you've got to search it and they're going to take it. Nine times out of ten, unless they're fucking assholes, they tend not to write you up. But if you get caught doing it, they are going to write you up because they know exactly what it's for. It's because you want that fruit for fucking to make hooch. When I when I made hooch, I'd have the youngsters do it, and if they got caught, it was on them. But I'd sort them out. I'd still give them some tuna or whatever. But generally, what I'd do is for every six apples or six pears or six oranges, mainly oranges. What was really good was when they had grapefruits because grapefruits are huge and they were fucking really juicy and you'd get a lot more hooch out of a grapefruit and it was nice hooch too but um, when they, but it's harder to get out too I mean if you've got fucking six grapefruits in the sock unless you're fucking Larry Holmes you're going to get fucking caught aren't you? <laughs> so bottom line is when you first go in it's a no no to just sit anywhere ideally you want to ask a friendly person who's not going to trip you up and do an okie doke Ask your cellmate. Your cellmate is the best person, unless yeah. your cellmate's got got it in for you. But generally, your cellmate is going to have your back, and he's going to be like, "Look, there's a spur seat over there with those dudes. Go and sit with them." And then once you are established in the chow hall, there's certain ways people behave. Like Wild Man said, no chomping and no sticking your, your fingers in people's food and stuff like that. But over time, when you sat with a group of people, you learn what they don't eat and what you like and what they don't like, and then. As soon as the trays are all put down, you generally have agreements with people whereby what they're not going to eat, if you like it, you can eat, and so and so, and certain people have exchanges. And, this, and over time, when these people have been together for years, you see them, they put the trays down, and immediately they all just fucking, the hands are just out exchanging all these different types yeah. of food. And what you also do is always offer to, if, you, if, you've, got in, if you've got in there, and you've got the food, and you don't particularly like it, I mean, don't sit picking at it, Say to someone, hey, do you want this? Or, you don't ever, because it's just, it's rude. Because, it, say you've, like, got half a burrito left, right? And you've finished eating. You don't pick your tray up and then go and hand your tray in without saying to the table, does anyone want that? Because I've seen it done, and it's not like, you are offer it to other people, you know what I mean? You're so hungry, aren't you? Yeah. Everyone's you, so hungry. I mean... I used to double down a lot of the times. I mean, there's, there's several ways of doing it. The best way to actually do it is if you go the pill line. When you go the pill line, it's usually 10 minutes before chow. You can actually go the pill line and you'll duck in with someone else's group. You'll come out, go back to your, your, your cell or your, your dorm. And then when they call you, you go into the chow or two. But if you get caught doing that, if the guy recognises you, it's an automatic ticket. The classic stealing. 
Yeah, people are so hungry in there. I've seen people drop like a patty on the floor. Or there's been a patty on the floor or something on the floor. And some dudes just come and picked it up and eat it. Do you remember Buster Beats? Yes, I do remember Buster and Beats. And he was uh, eating all the Red Death yeah, yeah. In, in Towers Jail. And um, what else? Oh, yeah, one one dude got stabbed. He was eating his, his, his starting to get into his chow. Some dude came up behind him, stabbed him in the neck. He jumped up, chased the guy, and the guy on the table opposite him watched this, him chase his assailant, and then he reached over to his chow tray and goes, he's not going to be needing that now, is he? And grabbed, grabbed the guy's patty and ate it. So when I, when I was first in Towers Jail, I couldn't eat shit, honestly. I ended up losing almost two stone on remand during that 26 months. But I didn't put my tray just like in the in the day room in Towers Jail. Everybody just stacked the trays near the sliding door. Yeah. And then, and then the trustees come and take them out. I didn't just put my tray on there. Like Wild Man said, people are so hungry, you've got to offer your food back to the prisoners. And because it's all racially divided, you've got to offer it to people of your own race. That's the rules. So in the beginning, whoever was the head of the gang in my building, I'd just go up to him and I'd be like, here you go, I'm not going to eat this, do you guys want this? And the head guy, what he would do, he'd be like, yeah, I'm going to take that, that and that. And then he'd leave the rest and he'd say, you guys can have this, you guys can have that. And they'd just split it up there. And it'd all be gone like that. But always offer it. Don't just put it out, out on the door. Uh, it, there's a lot of, also in county, when we first went to county, we were getting three meals. And for some reason they stopped, did you remember? Yeah, two, it went to Ladmo bags yeah, and Red Death. Yeah, we missed out on breakfast. And the fucking, the Ladmo bags were, I swear to God, it was this cheese, and I don't know what the hell it was, but if you put it on the windowsill, it just fucking melts. It's orange juice. It was just absolutely disgusting. It really was horrible. But I'd go to Pill Call, and they'd have the Ladmo bags, fucking, like, they'd have like a bin. As you're going to pill call, it's all, you're all in the same building, but it feels like you're going out. But as you're going to the pill call, they had this like big bin, and they had the Ladmo bags in Ladmo it. bags were the breakfast bags with the, the mouldy bread and the green bologna. Yeah. And so, fucking, I used to always go and raid, raid the bin, and like come home with loads of stuff. Because you're hungry, you're fucking there. I put, I went in and, Probably about 16 stone because I was tweaking a lot and doing crack. <laughs> and I probably left. I left county probably about 19 stone to be fair. I, I banged the weight on. Because it's all carbs you're eating. It's bread. Uh, potato. With eyes. But like, you know, it's, it's not so fucking bad really. <laughs> the, some of the spuds were bad though, weren't they? There was like mould, uh, like... Lesions, like black lesions, just went right into the spots and strands of human hair. Oh. In our piles jail, I was always finding strands of human hair in my slop and the spots. But well, Wild Man's left a story out of this. We're giving you advice on how to behave in chow hall times. And what Wild well, Man's not talked about is one night he was assigned to deal out the food. Ah. And I think the guard must have been a prankster because he assigned Wild well, Man. And he assigned this other guy, this Mexican-American gang member, who was like, this guy was like 400 pounds, yeah. 500 pounds, with an AK-47, he shot a load of people, a gang warfare. One of the bullets went through a woman, went through a nipple. Kids were in hospital in critical condition. And Wild Man and this guy had pretty big appetites. And then that night, nobody got their desserts. And everyone's like, where's the, where's the, it was like some little cupcake thing, wasn't it? It was Everyone's like, where's all that? People started banging on the windows at these guys, where's the desserts, where's the desserts? What had happened to the desserts, lad? Between me and um, <laughs> Gonzalez, I don't know, I forgot his first name. Alejandro. Alejandro Gonzalez, yeah. Very good man. But uh, he made me look small. He was actually, <laughs> he was actually, he was, him and Joey Crack, rest, God rest his soul, he's dead now. But we were actually sellies, and um, as Sean said, th th this guy did a drive-by, he fucking he shot this woman and etc. Shot a bunch of people. But yeah. it's first time, I'd, I'd been in towers for 14 months, and, fucking, and it, I think it was like month 10, 
do let us do it. And um, they never used you let two big fat guys fucking serve food, especially one. It was um, it was lovely, lovely, lovely cupcakes. <laughs> and I think between us, we had thirty six. And I'm not lying. Because we were just like, you know what, we'll have to deal with it fucking when we get in the fucking <laughs> cell. They're just too fucking nice. And as we're serving, we're just having a whole cupcake <laughs> each like that. Between us, we were like, he must have had like 20, I must have had like 16. But we did eat 36 fucking cupcakes. Yeah. And I think it was, um, I forgot what they called now, Hot Pockets. They were pizza Hot Pockets. And we must have had about 10 of them each as well. Never got to serve again. Nearly caused fucking riots. But, like, it was fucking worth it, you know what I mean? Where else you get to eat fucking 36 fucking cupcakes? <laughs> ah! Yeah, well, I can get away with that kind of stuff. But in this video, we're telling you what not to do. So, thanks for all your questions and comments. If you've got anything more, put them in the comment section. We'll keep these videos going. Really appreciate that we're almost at 100,000 subs. Yeah, please ask anything. We will answer. We will. Might take a bit of time. I try to, I mean, I, I don't go on Facebook much nowadays because I think it's so fucking boring. It's like, it's almost depressing. I mean, it's just like, who the fucking hell wants to see it? I mean, I've done cooking videos. Yeah, but it's prison cooking videos. It's a bit different. But who wants to see what who's having for the tea? And if you've noticed, it's always like steak or lobster and all that. It's bullshit. No one eats that every day. I mean... Sometimes, like, you know, you could be having spam and egg, and, but you don't put that on the fucking video, or cheesy beans on toast. I love cheesy beans on toast. <laughs> but it's just, like, so false. And you hardly see them on Facebook at all, and then they're on holiday, and they put on the holiday posters up. It's just like, hey, look what I'm doing. I'm doing better than you. I rub your face in it. Fuck you, Facebook fuckers. You know what I mean? <laughs> Cheers from witness. Yes.